The Harold Perry Show. <laughs> And now, Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, let's look in on the little town of Melrose Springs, home of that popular radio entertainer, Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, while we're at it, Let's look in on the home of Honest Harold, where he's just coming in to breakfast. Well, good morning, Mother. Oh, good morning, Harold. <laughs> Sit right down. Breakfast is all ready. Yeah, and so am I. Lead me to those hot cakes. <laughs> I suppose little Marvin's going to be late for breakfast again. Well, I suppose so. I don't know why that boy always has to wait till the last minute to get up, Mother. Every morning he comes charging in here like the Cannonball Express. Bolts his food down without chewing it. I'd hate to be his esophagus. Oh, well. <laughs> Here, I'll pour your coffee. Yeah, thank you, Mother. Really ought to talk to the boy, though. There's no reason why he can't get up like everybody else in this house. Good morning, everybody. Why, good morning, Marvin. Marvin, you're up early. What happened? Oh, I just thought I'd get up in plenty of time so I wouldn't have to rush through my breakfast. What? I want to chew my food thoroughly. Ha. Huh? <laughs> And I wouldn't want to be late for school. <laughs> Wonder if he could be sick. <laughs> and when I get up early, it gives me time to wash behind my ears. Oh, brother, now I know he's sick. <laughs> <laughs> now let me feel your forehead, Marvin. Oh, I feel fine. Harold, you don't have the morning paper. Let me get it for you. What? You sit right there. Be right back. I better feel my forehead. <laughs> Mother, what's Marvin on his best behavior for? Christmas isn't coming. No, but something else is. What's that? The circus. The circus? Oh, sure. <laughs> I should have known. Why, that little rascal. Here's the paper, Harold. Well, thank you, Marvin. May I butter your toast for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. Uh, Marvin? Yes, sir? You know, I just thought of something. The circus is coming to town today. Oh, it is? Hmm. <laughs> what a ham. I suppose all your little friends are going. Yes, I suppose they will. And I guess you'd like to go, too. Well, how did you know I wanted to go, Harold? Well, you were sort of on your good behavior this morning. <laughs> well, I guess I did put it on a little thick. <laughs> Then you'll take me, Harold? I sure will, my boy. You and I'll be right there in the front row tonight. We'll have a wonderful time. Gee, we sure will. Uh, Harold? Yeah? I have a confession to make. I didn't really wash behind my ears. You didn't? <laughs> well, I'm glad, my boy. I was getting kind of worried about you there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, little Marvin. Funny how a little thing like a ticket to a circus can make a boy so happy. I remember how excited I used to get when the Pollock Brothers Circus came to town and paraded down our main street. Well, I didn't notice that circus poster on the side of the feed store there. Gosh, look at those wild animals. Lions, taggers. Say, and look at that bareback rider. <laughs> Cute spangles. And that fella next to her, the human fire eater, must be her old flame. <laughs> Glad nobody heard that. <laughs> well, it's certainly going to be a lot of fun. Hello, Harold. <laughs> oh, Doc, I thought somebody was stripping their gears. Huh? Yeah, skip it, Doc. Oh. oh, looking at the circus poster, huh? Yeah. Say, who's that up there in the corner? Why, it's General Grant. Better put on your glasses, Doc. That's the bearded lady. Oh. <laughs> well, Harold, I suppose you're taking Marvin to the circus tonight. Sure am. Going to show him a real time. Sure, howdy, boy. Well, Pete. Oh, morning, Marshal. Say, that circus poster's a humdinger, ain't it? Yeah, it sure is. Well, I do declare. Just look at that fellow balancing himself way up at the top of the tent. Oh, yeah. What's he carrying that umbrella for? Maybe the tent leaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Harold... What's that fellow walking on up there? High wire. 
Hi, Harold. Say, <laughs> 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 uh, Harold's going to the circus tonight, Pete. You are, boy? Well, of course, just to take Marvin. We're growing up. No fun for us to go to a circus. Oh, of course not. <laughs> Why, that's kid stuff. Sure, kid stuff. Uh, what time are you two kids going to be there? Eight o'clock. Me too. <laughs> See you tonight, children. Bye. 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 Yeah, oh, Station KSJP. Just a moment. I'll connect you. Well, good morning, Glory. Oh, good morning, Harold. Gee, you look happy this morning. Yeah, I feel wonderful, Gloria. I'm taking a little Marvin to the circus tonight. He's really looking forward to it. Ah, oh, I bet he is. Doc and Pete are going, too. You want to come with us, Gloria? Oh, thanks, Harold, but my mother's taking me. Oh. Uh, what side are you going to sit on? I don't know yet. Oh, I Phone just... me, will you? <laughs> yes. I just love to see the circus. It's so exciting, especially the lion taming act. Yeah, it's pretty thrilling, all right. Uh, yes, but I hope the lion tamer has better luck than he had last year. What do you mean? Well, he kept holding that chair out to the lions, but not one of them would sit down on it. <laughs> you should have sat on that joke. I did. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> and I just can't wait to see that Professor Faria. Professor Faria? What does he do? Well, he gets shot out of a cannon twice a day. Yeah, but he gets a charge out of that. <laughs> what? Oh! <laughs> uh. <laughs> well, it's time for my broadcast. See you later, huh, Gloria? Well, radio listeners, that's about all of Honest Harold the Homemaker for this morning. However, before I sign off, I'd like to sing one more little song. Seeing all the circus posters today sort of took me back to my childhood. When I was younger, I used to hunger to climb up the ladder of life. Now that I've grown up, I might as well own up. It's not worth the worry and strive things that I wanted were paid for with blessings I cannot recall and all that I had I would trade for the things I considered so small oh I'd be more than satisfied if I could hide away beside a babbling brook Rippling waters call me far away To a quiet shady nook And through the woods I long to hike To linger where the world is like A story book like a lazy daisy gazing at the sky Let me live and love and let the world go by I'd be more than satisfied If I could hide away beside a babbling brook Like a lazy daisy Gazing at the sky Let me live and love And let the world go by Oh, I'd be more than satisfied If I could hide away beside A babbling brook This is Honest Harold the Homemaker saying Goodbye for this morning I hope you dial my way tomorrow. Huh, girls? Ta-ta. The pizzicatos are very good today, Yasha. See you tomorrow, musicians. See you at the beanery later, huh? I'd be more than satisfied. Harold? Harold? Hmm? What's the matter, Gloria? Oh, I've got terrible news. The circus isn't coming. Isn't coming? Why not? Oh, the circus trucks are stuck in the mud at Rutabaker Junction. Rutabaker? Oh, my goodness. Gee, Harold... I'll bet Marvin will be disappointed. Oh, he sure will. The poor kid. And he almost washed behind his ears this morning, too. <laughs> oh, hello, Harold.
Carl. Uh, hello, Mother. Did uh, little Marvin come home for lunch? Uh, yes, he's sitting out on the back porch. Oh, well, does he know about the circus? Yes, he does. <laughs> Guess he feels kind of bad, huh? Well, why don't you go out and talk to him, Harold? Well, all right. Hope I can cheer him up a little. Hello, Marvin. Hello. What are you doing, my boy? Nothing. Just sitting here. Oh. Uh, Marvin, I'm sorry about the circus not coming. Yeah. I know you're disappointed, but what the heck? The circus will be here again next year. Then you and I will go and have a wonderful time, won't we? <laughs> sure. <clears throat> Want to go down to the drugstore and have an ice cream soda? No, thanks. Speaking of ice cream, Marvin, did you ever hear about the comical marshmallow sundae? It acted so funny it made the banana split. <laughs> uh, <yeah>. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to do, Marvin? No, thanks. Uh -huh. Say, Marvin, I just got a wonderful idea. How about you and me going to the movies tonight? The movies? Yeah. They got a wonderful picture at the Bijou. Jimmy Stewart's in it. There's a real exciting scene in it where the villain tells Jimmy he's about to shoot him. And Jimmy says, Yeah. 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 <laughs> Would you like to see that? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Harold, I think I'll go back to school. All right, my boy. See you later. Yeah. See you later. Uh, uh, look at him, little Marvin. Sure looks unhappy, kicking that can. He's scuffing his shoes, too, but what the heck. <laughs> Circus is a pretty important thing to a boy. Wish there was something... Hello. <laughs> oh, hello, you old mule medico. Hey, Harry, I heard about the circus not coming. Yeah, Marvin's pretty disappointed. Oh, I know, Harold. I'm sure all the boys are disappointed. I'm afraid so. That's why I came over, Harold. Those children are going to have a circus after all. What? Who's going to put it on? We are. Ha Doc, are you crazy? That's beside the point, Harold. <laughs> we can have the circus right in my backyard. Have pink lemonade, peanuts. But, Doc... We can use my animals. We can paint stripes on Arthur the goat. He'll be a man-eating tiger. You mean can-eating tiger. <laughs> and my horse, Silver Moon, can do a mind-reading act. Silver Moon? Why, yes, that horse is very intelligent. She can count up to ten without using her toes. <laughs> I don't know, Doc. We can't put on a circus. Now, Harold, the kids are expecting one. Why, I bet they'll love it. Anyway, it's the spirit of the thing that counts. Maybe you're right, Doc. We ought to try it anyway for those little kids. Why, sure. And, Harold, you can be the ringmaster. I can? Well, bet I'll sound pretty good. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. I want you to meet the only knock-kneed, ball-headed dodo bird in captivity. Harold. Are you looking at me? <laughs> Why, Doc? <laughs> we will return for the second act of our story, Honest Harold, in just a moment. A little later on CBS Tonight... Bing Crosby will play host to trumpeter Louis Armstrong and the former child star Rose Marie. On CBS Wednesday Night Fight broadcast, undefeated Chicago Vehar will meet Billy Murphy of Brooklyn in a welterweight battle at New York St. Nicholas Arena. Be listening for the fight and for the Bing Crosby show on most of these same CBS stations. And now, back to Harold Perry as Honest Harold, the homemaker. Well, this is Circus Day in Melrose Springs. The real circus couldn't come to town, but Honest Harold and Doc and Pete are determined to save the day. They're going to put on a circus of their own for the youngsters of the town. In fact, they're getting ready for it right now in Doc's backyard. Come on, Pete. Help me put this plank on those boxes. Okay, boy. There. Now, these boards will be the bleachers. All the kids can sit here. We ought to put up a sign, management not responsible for splinters. <laughs> yeah, well, 
a few splinters won't hurt those little shavers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, say, it's beginning to look real circusy back here. All those pennants hanging on the clothesline. Say, this pink lemonade is pretty good, too. Yeah. Pete, leave some for the kids. Hey, oh, sure, hell. Now, where's Doc? We've got to get this thing rehearsed. Kids will be out of school at 3 o'clock. He's in the house putting on his lion taming suit. Oh, my goodness. He doesn't have to put that on now. Why doesn't he come... He, here he comes now. Oh, look at that outfit. Sun helmet, khaki shirt, puttees. Looks like a fugitive from an army surplus store. <laughs> well, I'm all ready for the big lion taming act. <laughs> Don't I remind you, Frank Buck? You remind me more of Sears Roebuck. <laughs> Okay, Doc. You look great. How about having a little rehearsal, huh? Why don't you go in the barn and get that goat of yours? Well, he's a wild, woolly lion now, Harry. Yeah, okay. All right, Pete. Here we go. I'll make the opening announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll begin the greatest show on earth with a circus overture by our one-man clown band. Pete, that's you. Oh, uh, just a minute, Harold. Where'd I put that kazoo? Uh, uh, here it is. Uh, one, two. <laughs> Guy Lombardo. Well, anyhow, Harold, we all finished together. <laughs> yeah, but not soon enough. Oh, yeah, well, I wouldn't say that. And now in the center ring, we present that world-famous animal trainer, Dr. Quentin Yancey, and Gilmore, the most ferocious lion in captivity. Okay, Doc? Yeah, all right. <clears throat> Come on, Gilmore. <laughs> Ooh, Arthur the goat certainly doesn't look much like a lion, even with that dime store mask. Oh, well. Now, stand back, everybody. Gilmore is a very dangerous lion. Roar, Gilmore. <laughs> Good. I will now perform the dangerous feat of putting my head in the mouth of this ferocious beast. <laughs> ferocious beast. He's licking Doc's ears. Now, Arthur, stop that. Stop it. Stop it. You're supposed to be a dangerous lion. Here. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Arthur, boy. Oh, now, now. Will you ever forgive Docky Walkie? Docky Walkie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a wild animal act. Now they're holding hands. Doc will take this later. Now, all right. Come on, Art. <laughs> Pete, let's rehearse our Wild West sharpshooting act, huh? Featuring Wild Bill Hemp. That's me. <laughs> it, well, now, wait. It, let me get this straight, Harold. What am I supposed to do? We've gone over this six times, Pete. I ride out on Doc's horse, Silver Moon, dressed in a Buffalo Bill suit. A Buffalo Bill suit? Let me write that down. Yeah. And I have a rifle loaded with blanks. Now, you ought to know what blanks are, Pete. You're one. I'm a blank. Let me write that down. <laughs> now, you hide behind that target on the fence there, and every time I shoot you... Every time I shoot, rather, you hit the target with a hammer. Hit target with hammer. Let me write that down. Should have been right the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Pete, now get behind the fence. I got you, boy. Ready? We'll try it. Bang! Pete, I said bang! Oh, oh, bang to you, boy. Look <laughs> <laughs> at the things I go through for Marvin. <laughs> giving a circus for us in the backyard. Going? Yeah, I heard about it. Well, aren't you going? No, it sounds too corny. Harold's going to be the ringmaster. I know, that's why it sounds corny. <laughs> Gee, Tommy, if none of us kids go, it'll hurt his feelings. Oh, I'm sorry, but I don't want to go. Tommy? Yeah? Would you go if I gave you one of my new tops? Your new top? Oh, that's different. Okay, I'll go. It's a deal. But I still say it's going to be corny. Are you going?
going to Harold's Circus this afternoon, Skinny? Heck no. Why not? It's gonna stink. <laughs> Gee, Harold will be awful disappointed if nobody comes. Why should I go? It's gonna stink. <laughs> Skinny, if you'll go, I'll give you my box kite. Will you throw in your flesh Gordon ring? Well, all right. And Oscar, your garter snake? Gee, Skinny, you want an awful lot. Well, I have to sit through a circus that stinks. <laughs> okay. The things I go through for Harold. <laughs> all right, Paige, it's a deal. You go to the circus and I'll give you my junior G-man badge. Okay, Clyde, that's a promise You said you'd go to the circus if I gave you the shirt off my back Just a minute, I'll take it off Hold still, Harold I don't want to stick you with this needle <laughs> All right, Mother You're going to look real handsome in your Buffalo Bill suit Oh, uh, thanks I'll be through sewing on this patch in just a moment I don't think it will show. Guess not. I'll be sitting on a horse most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, son, I think it's just wonderful you're putting on this circus for the youngsters. Well, we wanted to make Marvin and the other boys happy. Well, I'm sure you will. Hey, Mother, where is Marvin? He left a little while ago. He's such a neat little boy, Harold. Neat? Yes, he completely cleaned out his room today, carried away all his toys and things. Well. Hello. Oh, hello, Marvin. It, say, you're not wearing a shirt. Uh, uh, it was kind of hot, Harold. I took it off. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose you're pretty excited about the circus this afternoon, huh, Marvin? Yeah. Guess your little friends are all excited, too. Sure. I hear you're a real good boy today, straightening up your room that way. Understand you're all cleaned out. I sure am. <laughs> <laughs> Circus gonna start. Yeah, I'm getting tired of sitting on this plank. Me too. It's got splinters. Quiet, Tommy. I gave you my top, didn't I? Okay. Here comes Harold. Well, hello, boys and girls. Glad you all came out this afternoon, and we hope you like our little circus. <laughs> it's gonna stink. <laughs> Quiet, Skinny. Harold will hear you. Hey, Mr. Hemp, you got a patch on your pants? <laughs> Oop, bowed the wrong way. <laughs> well, we'll start our thrilling performance with an overture from the clown band. Take it away, Pete. Harold. Pete, play the overture. I can't, boy. Arthur the goat ate my kazoo. <laughs> oh, goodness. Ain't that a doozy? <laughs> <laughs> what a circus. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> next number. We now present the Parade of the Jungle Beasts. Okay, Doc. Coming. Not you, Doc, the animals. Oh! And here they come! First, that man-eating leopard. <laughs> Some leopard. A cocker spaniel with spots painted on it. <laughs> Don't you get too close to him, fellas. He's dangerous. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> well, the next jungle beast is the mighty elephant. <laughs> What an elephant! A cow wearing a gas mask. <laughs> I wish I had a gas mask. This circus stinks. <laughs> Cute little fellow. <laughs> oh my goodness, the cow scared the dog. Carmen, don't you recognize Daisy? Oh, Doc, get those wild animals out of here. <sighs> Well, that concludes the parade of the jungle beasts. Thank goodness. <clears throat> and now the world's most daring wild animal trainer, Dr. Yancey and his ferocious lion. <clears throat> what is it, Doc? Arthur isn't a lion anymore. Why not? He just ate his mask. <laughs> Ooh, what a lion. <laughs> <laughs> the next act will be that famous marksman of the Old West, Honest Har... Uh, I mean, Wild Bill Hemp. Get behind the target, Pete. Got you, boy. Now I will give you a demonstration of some real sharpshooting. If Pete doesn't forget. 
I'll just take my trusty rifle here and watch me ring the bullseye. Here goes. <laughs> Pete? Oh. <laughs> Glad you liked it, folks. That was my delayed shot. <laughs> now, watch this one. <laughs> really nothing to it? I'll show you again. <laughs> Double barrel. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I think I'll try a trick shot. I'm going to put my rifle between my legs. Beat you to it that time, boy. <laughs> I want to talk to you. Intermission, folks. Hey, Marvin, this is terrible. I ought to give you your top back and go home. Me too. I wish I hadn't taken your flash Gordon ring and your garter snake. Please don't go, fellas. Harold will be awful disappointed. I'm sorry, Marvin, but this just... Hey, what's that music? Huh? Sounds like a circus band. Yeah. Huh? Hey, Gloria just called up. The real circus is here. It is? Yeah, they got the trucks out of the mud. They did? The circus is going to play tonight. Oh, isn't that wonderful, fellas? Hear that, Skinny? Yeah. They're parading up Main Street right now. Wonderful. Come on, Skinny. Come on, dog. Go. We don't want to miss that parade. Right. No. Wait a minute, fellas. We sure don't, Pete. Come on, Harry. Wait a minute, but what about all these... Oh, well. Everybody's happy. Uh, uh, guess I'd better go, too. Oh, hello, Marvin. Hello, Harold. Well, Marvin, tonight you and I are going to go to a real circus. That'll be swell. Uh, Harold, hmm? I thought your circus was swell, too. You did? Thanks, my boy. It was nice of you to get all those boys to come. That's all right. And, Marvin, after we see the parade, I think I'd better buy you some new toys, huh? I wonder where they sell garter snakes. <laughs> <laughs> You have just heard the Harold Perry Show, Honest Harold. The supporting players tonight included Jane Morgan, Harley Bayer... Who played his own kazoo. <laughs> Stuffy Singer, Sammy Ogg, Johnny McGovern, David Light, and featured Gloria Holliday as Gloria and Joseph Kearns as old Doc Yak Yak. David Light played the goat. <laughs> Norman MacDonald directed, and the music was composed and conducted by Jack Meekin. Honest Harold, created by Harold Perry, was written by Gene Stone and... Jack Robinson. The story of a woman who commits a perfect crime only to be trapped by a small sound will be told on radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense, tomorrow night. Ann Baxter will star in this unusual thriller called The Thirteenth Sound. Be listening for Ann Baxter on Suspense, tomorrow night on CBS. Stay tuned now for The Bing Crosby Show, which follows immediately on most of these same CBS stations. Bob Lamont speaking. <laughs> this is CBS, where you meet Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons every Thursday night. The Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>